Hey friends, Andrew here, hope you're well. Today I've come up with a list of 14 settings you want to immediately change once you upgrade your Mac to the new Mac OS Sonoma here. I've been testing Sonoma on my M2 Air for weeks now, and although it's not the biggest update, there is a host of great features and setting changes that you wanna check out, so let's get right into it. The very first Mac OS Sonoma change is docked web apps, just like this one here. So we can now finally create apps that launch specific web pages from our doc like this here. And to do this is pretty simple. So all you need to do is head over to Safari and then head over to the website that you want to create an app for. And then once it's loaded, you go into file here and then click add to doc. And this is where we can change the app icon and also the name. So let's just change it to something simple. So you can see the app here now. And then once you click it, instead of just launching Safari and the web page, it actually launches an app version of the web page and it's actually independent from Safari itself. And you can use this app specifically in Mission Control and Stage Manager, just like any other app. And it looks quite beautiful. It's quite reactive. It's fast and responsive. I think it's worth taking some time adding your favorite web pages to your dock for easy access like this. The next thing that you want to set up or actually turn off is inline predictive text. So for example, if I bring up the notes here and I type in, you know, thank you very much much it'll immediately i didn't even type that out it immediately completed that sentence for me so to change that setting go into system settings and then go scroll down to keyboard and then from keyboard scroll down to text input and then click edit and then from here you can see that there is show inline predictive text you can turn this off or on so some people love it and other people don't and in my opinion, if you're a fast typer, you'll probably find this more annoying than helpful. But if you're a slower typer on the keyboard, you might find it helpful. Another keyboard related setting you want to change is the keyboard dictation feature, which has been significantly improved in Sonoma. So it's worth giving it a go. So back in the keyboard settings, going back in system settings, scrolling down to keyboard, from here, there is this new dictation area right down here that allows you to use your voice to type for you together with your keyboard. So this is improved from the previous OS. So here's an example of using it. So click edit in the toolbar and then scroll down to start dictation. An easier way to do this is just press F5. And then I'm going to say, uh, write me a sentence. So it's actually pretty fast as you can see. And it literally is a nifty way to journal and get your thoughts out. Safari has also received a big upgrade in Sonoma, and we can now create different profile settings for Safari, which is an easy productivity hack. So to set this up, go into Safari again, and then click Safari and click settings. And then from here at the top, click profiles, click new profile. And my recommendation is to create one for work, play, and also anything else that you might want to research. So for example, uh, let's just set up one for work and click the symbol that you want to represent it, the color. And then from here, you can create new bookmark folders or use existing folders. So I'll just go ahead and click create profile. So you can now see the profile you're in on the top left hand corner and you can launch new profile windows by right clicking Safari on the dock here. Uh, so where did Safari go? Click here and you can launch new work windows or new personal windows. Another great Safari feature on Sonoma is locking private tabs. So say if you're browsing some super saucy stuff, whatever it is, I'm not judging, you can lock those tabs so no one gets access to them. So to do this, go into Safari again and then click settings and then go into privacy here and you'll see a new line here and it says private browsing require touch ID to view locked tabs. And so depending on the Mac you have, you'll either see touch ID to unlock or password to unlock. It's a great option to have that added layer of extra security when you're browsing. So now when I open up a new tab in private in incognito, if I were to open and close this laptop again, it would require Touch ID to open up that page again. Another really important security setting to set up is the security response files feature, which was first introduced in Ventura as the rapid security feature. So to do this, go into system settings and then go into software updates. 
And then from software updates, you can see here at automatic updates, click the info icon. And with install security responses and system files, just make sure this is checked on. A heads up on this feature, this doesn't actually replace full software updates, but instead it allows Apple to quickly install small updates across all your Mac devices in the event that they find bugs or a security breach. And talking of security breaches, while you're getting set up on the new Mac OS, if you haven't already, you might want to check out the Clean My Mac X app, today's video sponsor. So Mac issues often creep up out of nowhere from running out of application memory to full-blown data loss. I personally like to take a preventative approach with Clean My Mac X. It's an app that regulates my Mac in real time and prevents all sorts of issues. For example, if you're planning to install Sonoma, the upgrade will take up about 13 gigabytes, so you'll want to free up as much space as possible to upgrade over without any hiccups. Clean My Mac X helps you free up that space by not just deleting junk in your bin, but also running deeper scans with tools like Space Lens and Smart Scan here. And it'll scan and get rid of all sorts of things I wouldn't have the time to check, like even old podcasts saved via Apple Music. And it does even more than this to make sure that your Mac is running at its best so it's ready to take on any task you throw at your Mac. You can try out a seven day free trial in the link below and go ahead and run those scans and automatic clean before you upgrade your Mac OS. So moving on now, if you have access to an iCloud subscription, it's worth turning on the hide my email setting, which allows you to send out and receive emails without using your real email address. So go into iCloud here, and then once you click iCloud, scroll all the way down to hide my email. So here in hide my email, you can then create your spoof email. And if you don't like the email address that's automatically generated for you, you can press refresh here and it will give you a different iCloud spoof email. Then you can just label it and then make a note and then set that up itself. So once you've done that, future emails can then be ported through this email for privacy back to your real email address. It's actually quite handy. Going back out to the iCloud settings, go scroll down to the advanced data protection part here. And this setting is worth turning on if you're big on security. It activates end-to-end -end encryption, which basically means that you can only access your iCloud files on trusted devices. So even if there's like a data breach on Apple's servers, your content will be safe and secure. So go ahead and click turn on, and then it will guide you through how to set it up, including account recovery. So the next one is a must do to get organized and it's smart folders. They're folders, but smart because they're able to automatically find and organize your files on your Mac. And I'll show you how it works. So go ahead and bring up Finder and under the toolbar, click file and click new smart folder. So from here, all you need to do is click the plus icon and then you can create all sorts of parameters and folders as you wish. So for example, if I wanna find uh, Sony photos or photos specifically taken on a Sony camera or even an iPhone, what you do here is click uh, device make matches and let's just type in Sony. And then immediately I get all the photos that I want to match this file type. And then on the desktop right here, you can see the new smart folder with the gear icon, click Sony photos, and you can see immediately that I've got all the photos that I've taken on the Sony. Uh, it's that easy and it just makes it just makes life so much easier when it comes to getting organized. So I've always appreciated the beautiful Apple TV screensavers and they're finally available on Mac OS Sonoma. So to set this up, go into system settings and scroll down to screensaver. And from here, you can see finally, we have a whole bunch of different screensavers that we can now download and pull from Apple's servers. And then if you want your screensaver to be matched up with your wallpaper, you can click this here. And what I love about this is if I go ahead and lock the screen, you can see that it matches perfectly with the new Sonoma lock screen with the time here. Similar to the iPhone lock screen, it's really beautiful and I absolutely love this new interface. One of the biggest visual changes in Sonoma is interactive widgets as you can see here. They don't live hidden off screen anymore. You can literally set them right on the desktop. So all you need to do to bring this up is actually just right click the desktop and then click uh, edit widgets here. Once you've set the first widget in, you can stick it wherever you want, but after that you need to stick within this region. So let's pull in another one. Let's just pull in the world time clock. 
Um, as you can see, it literally gets you to snap it in certain areas uh, because, you know, Apple wants your desktop to be very clean, clearly. But one of the cool things is that they're interactive, so you can actually play around with them on the desktop. So let's add the Reminders app on here. So let's pull this in here. And just to give you a quick example, you can go ahead and tick off something and it will literally, uh, it's interactive. So you can go ahead and tick it off right from the desktop right then and there. A fun new feature to check out as well is the new presenter overlay and video effects during video calls. So you can now use these video effects both in Zoom or FaceTime calls or whatever video app that you're using. So as you can see here, I'm talking directly through uh, Zoom right now. And this is green button here, go ahead and click it. And you can see that I'm in Zoom right now. There's a whole bunch of different things that you can use. So portrait, uh, you can turn on this like sort of like depth of field blurry background effect, uh, studio lighting, and then reaction. So this is great fun. So you can turn this on and off. I'm gonna turn it on and you can see here that you can use different effects now. So to show you what it looks like, if I click the balloon button, you can see that has this sort of 3D effect. So it's back, back in the background and also in the foreground, which is pretty impressive. Uh, and apparently this is quite intensive on the Mac and it only works on M2 Macs, unfortunately, but it is a pretty cool effect if you can actually use it. Um, and it's just a fun one to use. If you made it to the very end of this video, drop the code word comment California and I'll give it a like. If you found this video useful, I would appreciate if you dropped a like and be sure to subscribe for more. You should also consider checking out this video here where I share the new iOS 17 settings. You should definitely change if you have an iPhone. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.